Hello, St. John's. It's Chris Roussel. Sarah Weatherly. And Ben Kogel. Today is our today is our weekly update. <laughs> yeah. This is our weekly update. Today is Wednesday. September 15th, 2021. <laughs> it really does take a village to get this done, yes. I promise you. Um, so we are setting up our podcast, and you'll hear a lot more about that towards the end of our video. Um, but here's the neat thing is that in our podcast each week, we're going to have a discussion about the collects. That's those opening prayers in our, in our liturgies each Sunday. And so what we've decided is that we're going to do that same collect on the weekly video updates. And that way you hear this collect three different times. Once here at the weekly update, again on Sundays during the liturgy, and then third and finally uh, the following week on our podcast. And so we're hoping that these beautiful prayers of the church won't get missed and that they'll actually seep in because uh, we only hear them really once a week each mm -hmm. year. And right. so I think this yeah. is a great opportunity for us to learn more about them and to really appreciate this, this beautiful prayer of the church. So this upcoming Sunday is proper number 20. 20. 20. And I've asked Ben to share that prayer for us and with us. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those things that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful prayer. We uh, got word on Sunday afternoon, and we posted on our Facebook page, that Bishop Jack Spong died on Sunday. Uh, he was 90 years old. We, we were trying to nail down the exact um, rectorship number he was. We think he was maybe the fifth or sixth or the fourth. fourth. He was the fourth rector at St. John's. We know that he served from 1965 to 1969. Um, he was a phenomenal pastor and rector who did some incredible ministry, especially here at St. John's during the civil rights movement. He helped people uh, uh, embrace and understand what the civil rights movement was about and really come face to face with the issues of racism. Uh, he went on to become one of the most prolific writers as a bishop in the Episcopal Church, and many would agree that he was quite controversial. But in the very least, what Bishop Spong invited all Episcopalians and in fact all Christians to do was to really think and to question and to ask and to say, what is it that I really believe. We know what the church believes, but how do we take the church belief, that universal belief, and a, and and really uh, own it, our own uh, own it ourselves? And so um, we pray for Bishop Jack Spong. We're going to remember him in our prayers of the people on Sunday at the two liturgies at the eight o'clock and the ten thirty. So we simply pray that he may rest in peace, that his family, his friends, and all those whose lives he's touched um, may find some comfort in the knowledge that we pray and hope he may be resting now with the Lord in peace. I, I want to address, uh, before we go too deeply into our announcements, um, something that is pretty heavy on my heart. Uh, we did make the decision last week in consultation with some of our leadership here at St. John's to postpone and delay the Sunday fun day. Uh, we know that there were many people who were looking forward to that event. There were lots of our young families who had registered and were planning to be in attendance. Uh, the decision was made simply on the basis of the rising COVID numbers. Granted, it was scheduled to be outside. Uh, granted, there probably were several precautionary measures that maybe we could have instituted or, or put in place at the time. Uh, but we just felt at the time that the most prudent thing to do was to postpone it. Well, I've since gotten lots of feedback from parishioners who were very disappointed that yet one more thing, especially something that affects and impacts our young people and our young families, was canceled and postponed. We know that kids are back in school. We know that soccer clubs are, are back together. People are on swim teams. They're, you know, kids are doing things together. And here at the church, uh, we've been a little slower at regathering uh, or giving opportunities for our young people to regather. And I'll be frank with you, uh, our slowness on doing that is just out of an abundance of caution. I mean, for me, it's great fear. You know, my, my worst fear um, is that someone will get sick and die because 
That is the extreme possibility and reality of this illness. Any child under 12 is not vaccinated because they're not allowed to be vaccinated before. And so they're extremely vulnerable. And so what I, what we as a pastoral leadership team, what your vestry and others are, are trying to do is weigh in the balance, uh, the, the risk of infection and spreading and becoming a super spreader event, uh, weighing that against um, kind of hedging our bets on the time and hoping that this thing will pass sooner rather than later. And, and I think we're coming to learn 18 to 20 months into this thing that, that it's not going away very soon. And we are losing a certain sense of critical time to make sure that we keep our young families and especially our young people engaged with St. John's Episcopal Church. Um, I will say kids are always welcome to come to the things that we have here, uh, but most especially and most importantly, our Sunday liturgies. If you as parents feel comfortable coming in, we, we're, we're developing some new protocols now. Uh, the vestry, we had a conversation, Ben mm -hmm. and Sarah were integral to that conversation uh, about what do we need to do in order to remain safe. So all of our activities are going to require that everyone mask, that we socially distance from one another in terms of our seating. We're not going to put the ropes back up just yet. If we have to, we will. But we ask you to help us and to keep your distance uh, to come in wearing your mask and not wait until you're in the pew and, and to make sure that you've gotten some distance between you and anyone who's not necessarily in your pod. I, I really, really would like to see our young families with their children back in church and I'd like to see it beginning this Sunday. We need to pray that this COVID thing will go away and we need to pray in community and we need to bring our prayers and petitions before our Lord God. The other thing that we are reinstituting now is contact tracing. We're not going to ask folks to um, register, pre-register for the services on Sunday, but when you do come in, we are going to ask folks to sign in so that if anyone ends up testing positive in the week following, we know who we can alert privately and let them know that there may have been a, a potential contact. We did it when the pandemic first started. When vaccines came out, we sort of let that uh, particular thing go, but we're, we're bringing it back. And we're bringing it back because we want to make everyone feel safe because we want to see people in our church. And we most especially want to see our young people. Sarah has started Children's Chapel yeah, on I Sunday, have. and uh, that went really well. And she'll, she'll talk about the need for volunteers for Children's Chapel. But I, I, I can't be more um, explicit about the level of my desire to invite you to come back to church and be with us in prayer. So I apologize from the bottom of my heart for the postponement of the Sunday fun day. We will regather and reinstitute some other fun things that are coming up. Sarah will talk about that momentarily. In fact, why don't I shut up and I'll let Sarah <laughs> talk about those things now. Hey St. John, so I am planning these youth activities and my goal is to have youth groups start meeting September 26th from 4.30 to 6.30. Um, and I think it's just gonna be a time for them to get to know me, me to get to know them, you know, in prayer, in fellowship, in food, outdoors. Um, and we're also gonna be looking at renovations. So I want them and their input on what paint color we choose. Renovating what? what? Oh, oh, the missional house. Oh. The youth area of the missional house is yeah. getting renovated. Uh -huh. That's right. I actually knew that, but I'm playing. <laughs> You're playing dumb. <laughs> playing, 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 dumb. dumb. Yeah. playing dumb. I don't want you to think I'm, I'm that unengaged. Uh, uh, but what are some things that we're going to be doing? We're going to be painting. We're going to be picking out new carpet, building some furniture, probably. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> just like a lot is going into it. And are, we do, are you doing that on the 26th? No, not on the 26th, uh. but we can take votes for paint colors. So what are more. you doing on the 26th? It's just going to be games, fun. Food, outside prayer. inside a little mix of both so eating outside because i feel like that's safest but inside the youth house or missional house we're able to spread out a lot more with middle school being on the top level and high school being at the bottom there's enough room for us to spread and and, and if we need to distance, use mcgill hall you we know will. you're welcome to use mcgill hall because that obviously is a, a nice big space uh, yeah well that's pretty exciting yeah and it's all good stuff and you know i'm hoping to reschedule sunday fun day sometime in the near future indeed. um indeed and that'll be for 
I think we decided as a vestry that would be safest for elementary age students. Um, the Sunday fun day? The Sunday fun day. Yeah. yeah, we want to make sure that we capture things for our elementary age students mm -hmm. to be able to participate in and do things. Yeah. We'll have more information forthcoming. Well, we have some educational opportunities for our adults. That's right. So we are starting back Adult Forum in full force this, uh, this Sunday. Um, we're going to be doing, we're covering the Book of Common Prayer this year, and the first section of that class is going to cover the history of the Book of Common Prayer. So uh, you'll actually be leading the forum because I'm preaching this weekend. So Chris is leading the forum on Sunday, but then next week we switch and back and forth and back and forth. But you, you know, when the I, first, you know, when I was by myself, I had to preach and do the adult forum. That's right. But I don't have to anymore. Thanks be to God. Thanks <laughs> God. Thank God that Ben is here. So yeah, we're going to alternate. Was it that bad? Or no, was it no, like just no. a lot it, of work? It wasn't that bad. It was, it was, it is a lot of work. It's yeah. a lot of work. But we put in two or three or four hours per every hour of content that we're wow. delivering you so imagine chris doing well i guess i guess brooke was doing the bible study i was gonna say imagine doing the forum yeah. and the sermon that's a quarter of his work week right? well and we and to be fair we hadn't done uh the adult forum got suspended when covid hit mm -hmm. and so that that has been on hiatus so to speak sure um but anyway <laughs> well anyways that was is, a distraction the point is we're doing the book of common prayer we're going to cover the history starting in 1549 that's how long that Anglicans and Episcopalians have been using a book like this uh, in English, in the language of the people, to pray to God. Um, so we're talking about that history for about five weeks. Yep. Uh, we might have a guest or two. We're still waiting to find out if we're going to be able to bring in a guest lecturer um, on Sunday morning via Zoom. So they'll zoom in and join us. It's one. It's one of the great. It's actually one of the benefits that that COVID has taught us. It's it's held helped our parishioners learn how to use Zoom, but it's also mm -hmm. equipped us and taught us that hey. If we have a guest lecture, they don't have to fly into Lynchburg in order mm -hmm. to do a presentation. They can do it from the comfort of their own homes if they want to, from anywhere in the world, and uh, we can get top-notch experts to speak. That's and right. that's what we're that's what we're aiming for. That's what we're working towards. Absolutely. Uh, the other thing is the Path Bible Study is starting also in full force on Monday. So that'll be offered at 10 a.m., both in person uh, with the COVID precautions and on Zoom. So you can come either way at 10 a.m or 7 p.m., which will be Zoom only. So again, from the comfort of our own homes, Chris or I or both of us, whoever's leading, we'll be at home, so we don't expect you all to come to church <laughs> if we're gonna be at home, right? Right. Um, and that'll be an hour, it's discussion-based, and this week we're reading chapter one of The Path. Uh, if you haven't been able to get The Path, you can go to our website under programs, there's a Bible study page now, and you can find a link there to download the PDF, or you can find the link to get the book on Amazon. That's pretty awesome. Yes. And then, so talking about Bible studies, the women of St. John's, they're meeting this Thursday, um, the 16th from 7.30 to 8.30. And there's like an invite, an evite going out that I received, um, but there should be more information on the website. Is that correct? Maybe? Yes, there is. It's, in, it's actually in the email that contains this video. Oh, yes. perfect. The weekly update. Um, yeah, the weekly update. But you guys video. can contact e Megan Moss, Amanda Smithson, or Caroline Fuller about that. Exactly, and get the time, the location. You gave the times, but the location. The location of, I'm and keeping secret. I understand you're planning on going. Yes, right? I will be there. It's at a parishioner's home, and uh, I will tell you that those parishioners are committed to being COVID safe. So if you have any concerns or questions about their protocols at home, you, you may call any of those three women and chat with them about it. Um, and hopefully there will be a, a, a really good turnout, uh, something for our, the women of our parish to get together and have fellowship and, and prayer and study together. Uh, we have started, perhaps you've, well, you should have already received by now, our first stewardship letter that came from me that is part of the Every Perfect Gift campaign. That's our campaign slogan for this year. Uh, you will be receiving a letter from Senior Warden Mary Bice this week. Next week, you will receive a letter from campaign chair John Edmonds along with the pledge card. Now, I will call your attention to the fact that you can go online to your Realm account and do your pledge there so that you don't have to fill out the card and send it in. You can if you want to, but, but you can do it electronically as well. You can always check the status of your giving of the current pledge year by going to your Realm account and looking at the giving option. Uh, we, will, we will have some instructions from the stewardship committee on how to access the Realm account and how to pledge online. 
Then, it, oh yeah, it's me. I look like a G, and I'm thinking, yeah, so see, B for Ben, S for, <laughs> S for Sarah, Sarah. And C for Chris. Who's G? God. It's C with a little God. 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 I almost forgot. <laughs> we did a reveal of the logo on Sunday. Did you see it? Did you miss it? What's it look like, Sarah? Ta da! Here. Here, yeah, you got that. You have long arms. There you go. Oh, I love it. I love it. So we have some items with the new logo. Um, the, this past Sunday, we did an adult forum where we explained the theology of it, um, or the process by which we came about, and everybody that was there and participated and everybody who was in church on Sunday uh, gave an overwhelmingly positive response to uh, this new logo that is, is now going to represent, um, in, in terms of a uh, graphic design, uh, who we are and what we're about. Miss Sarah's got a lovely t-shirt and we're taking orders for t-shirts. You also have a Tervis. A Tervis tumbler with the logo on it. Those are cool. I mean, you can can you you can put hot and cold things in there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So so I can but put But you can't put it in the dishwasher. Or maybe you can. Well, I don't it know. says it on the bottom. It says But it'll Do it'll, not microwave, mm. hand wash. But it'll mm. hold it'll yeah, hot hold, hold hot, hot and, and cold. cold. So I can put a uh, hot soup and a popsicle in it. At the same at, time. At the same time. Kind of. Um, but it'll it be a close, popsicle flavored close. soup. It's actually that is the punchline of an old, old Cajun Boudreau joke that I'll tell <laughs> another time when it's appropriate. But we have a couple of giveaways for folks just to drum yeah. up the excitement, right? That's right. Um, so we've already done a couple giveaways. On Friday we had a giveaway on our Facebook page. Well, there's Wednesday or Thursday we had a giveaway. <laughs> Ellen Edmonds won a a t shirt. Uh, mm -hmm. for liking our post she was randomly selected Yay. and on friday we had another post that was up for a random selection of someone who liked commented or shared and andrea dukes won a loaf of bread made by our very own sarah weatherly yes. so sarah will be in touch with you about that um as we mentioned earlier our, our closing thing is that we're unveiling this new podcast that we're super excited about right if you if you like our dynamic our chatting around this table well this is what we do now <laughs> On Tuesdays, we record a podcast together where we're not dealing with the Wednesday announcements. We're dealing with all the stuff of faith, right? We're having conversations yeah. about our faith, about our beliefs, about life, uh, and what's going on in our lives. Um, and we're really excited for this new ministry of the church. Uh, so to promote this, tomorrow, Thursday, there will, we'll post the trailer to our new podcast on uh, Facebook, and you can like, comment, or share that for a chance to win a homemade apple pie by yours truly. Ooh, God. Ooh. And then next week when we so post... So wait, I, I, so you post the trailer. And we're going to post the trailer. We're going to post the trailer, and then our friends out there need to like, like that's thumb it up for you older folks like me. Comment. <laughs> comment Type on it, up. right? Da, 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 da. And then and share. So... Someone has to do, uh, and if, if we get a bunch of people to do all three, then there'll be a random drawing uh -huh. of who can win. An apple pie. Delicious apple pie. It's homemade. That's right, homemade. Can we two of them? Is you, that a possibility? Two for you? Um, for the only, office? For only the office. if you like, comment, and share, okay. Sarah. I, I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> do you make your own pie crust? or does I it... don't, but I have in the past. I have once before. Allison helped me out and okay. did the pie crust. But Okay. Okay. But it's the pie it's, it's, it's the Kobo pie inside. recipe. It's the stuff on the inside that counts. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's, a, that's a good metaphor, right? A meta that's metaphor right. for people. That's right. Love, love awesome. Into it. So and next, then next week, week right? we'll have another giveaway when we send out the first episode to everybody. Yep. We'll send out the first episode. That's season one, episode one, our very first attempt at this <laughs> podcast hashtag whatever thing. <laughs> <laughs> and if... We get uh, someone, an adult who's 21 years or older, who likes it, thumbs up it, mm -hmm. and comments. comments, types it up, and shares it to their own Facebook page, then we'll have a random drawing, and I will offer you a bottle of my favorite red wine. I think I know what it is. I know you know what it is, <laughs> because you were kind enough to gift it to us at one time. Uh -huh. uh, and you, were at the, you and Ben were at the house on Sunday <laughs> yeah. for lunch, and we had some. So uh, it's a great wine. I'll keep it secret for right now, but it is fantastic. It is really good. And uh, I'll, we will, I'll gladly offer a bottle of my favorite red wine to whoever does that for us. We want to get this thing off the ground. Uh, St. John's is our primary audience, but we also know that there are a lot of other folks out there uh, who might be interested in some of the kinds of faith journey conversations that we plan on having during the season. Absolutely. 
That's great. That's right. And so that podcast is called One More Thing. thing. <laughs> I don't have one more thing right now. So That's are, we right. All, are we all done? Yeah. We're done. Great. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Bye, St. John. Thanks be to God. <laughs>